Okay, so let's look at um, this sort of generic form, right? Sine to the m of x times cosine to the n of x, right? Sine, sine, sine times cosine with each of them to different powers, or the same power, honestly. Um, so option one here, the way we're gonna break it down is, is based on whether the powers are sort of even or odd. Um, and, and so the, the best case scenario for us here, I, I would say, is if either the m or the n value is odd and positive, right? So you'd like to have either an odd power on your sine or an odd power on your cosine. Um, and the move is gonna be, right? So, so let's take one of these for example, right? So then the integral of sine to the four uh, or you know, sine x to the four times uh, cosine cubed of x dx. Um, what you're gonna do, right? So in this case, it's the, the cosine function that's cubed, that's, that's raised to the odd power. And so, so what you wanna do is think of cosine cubed, right? That would be cosine squared times a single cosine, right? You can sort of break it up instead of three, you can break it up as like a two and one. And the move is going to be to do that. Um, and then what you're going to do is you want to keep that one by itself. And then we'll go back, right, from our Pythagorean identity, right, rearranged. Cosine squared is going to be the same thing as one minus sine squared. So what you're going to do is, is right, so, so break your cosine cubed up so that you've got one cosine here. And then this guy, right, this cosine squared, what did we just say? It's gonna be the same thing as one minus sine squared x. Uh, essentially the move is you wanna sort of rewrite this integral rather than having it be you know, combinations of, of sine and cosine. What you really wanna have is, is one cosine at the end to kind of act as your derivative to write get canceled by your sort of du over. Um, and you kind of want everything else to be in terms of sine. So let me kind of rewrite this, right? So this sine to the four, we're not really touching it. It has the even power, so I'm not doing anything with that. Cosine cubed, right? We sort of said that's cosine squared times cosine x. And then we said cosine squared would be the same thing as one minus sine squared of x, right? Times this sort of one left over cosine. So what we've created now is kind of everything here is in, in terms of the sine function. It's sort of only sine functions that are here with one cosine at the end. Um, and the move is gonna be, you can kind of do this at any point. I, I guess we'll just sort of do it now, um, right? This sort of cosine x dx, that's gonna end up being your derivative. So what you wanna do is if cosine is, is your leftover, what you wanna do is let u equal the other function, right? So if cosine is the leftover, in, in this case, cosine is the one with the odd power, you take one cosine out, the rest of them, right? So now if, if this is odd, if you take one away, the rest of them will be even. So it would either be a cosine squared or a cosine to the four or to the six. Any of those powers, right, can, can sort of be reduced to just cosine squared times another cosine squared times another cosine squared. You can just do this step over and over again right? So you have one leftover cosine. The rest of them, which will always be sort of in pairs, can be rewritten as one minus sine squared, right? You'll get that sort of for every two cosines you have left over, times the other sine. And so use that u uh, as sine x. So then your derivative, right, du dx, would be cosine x. So your dx is du over cosine x. And so when you start to sub this stuff in, what it's gonna look like, right? So sine to the four, so that's u to the four, right? One minus sine squared, so one minus u to the two. Cosine x is still here. And then your dx is du over cosine x, right? So we do this u substitution in this sort of very specific way, right? This is this is pretty planned out. Um, this seems like it'll work because we'll have, right, cosine and cosine, these guys will just cancel. So then this becomes, right, you know, u to the four times one minus u squared to u. 
you don't need to do any sort of products. I mean, what you need to do is just multiply this out, right? If you distribute, this would be, you know, u to the four minus u to the six du. You just get a nice like power rule there. And, and so that'll integrate really easily, right? That's just gonna be right kind of one fifth u to the five minus one over seven u to the seven plus big C. And then we just sub back in, right? U is sine X. So one fifth sine to the fifth of X minus one seven sine to the seven X plus big C. And that's it, we're good to go. Um, you know, believe it or not, that's that's gonna be enough to kind of get us there. Um, obviously, as, as with some of these later situations, right, as, as these integral processes get like more complex, uh, it becomes a little bit trickier to like take a derivative and, and get back to the original, right? Sine to the four times cosine cubed. Not impossible, right? I mean, you can certainly do it. You, you get kind of this sine to the four minus sine to the six, and then you could kind of undo the work that we did here. Um, a little annoying, but I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's doable. It, it just is, is, is not the best. But in any event, that's, that's kind of the process. So that would work if either the power on sine or cosine is, is odd. Let me give you just another example um, where instead of using, uh, instead of having cosine power be odd, you know, what if it's the sine power instead? This one I think will go pretty fast. The idea is uh, it's essentially the exact same steps and the exact same process. We're just kind of flipping the role of, of sine and cosine. So maybe I've got sine to the fifth of x, right? Times cosine squared x dx. So I wanna look for the odd power. So that's here. So then what's my sub? So sine to the five of X. So that would be right kind of sine to the four times sine X. And then that, I mean, that's interesting, right? Sine to the four, that would be kind of sine squared times sine squared, right? Essentially what you're doing is, is you're taking this and breaking it down into uh, one left over, right? Kind of one by itself. And then the rest are, are sine squareds. From there, the sub, again, right back to our original kind of Pythagorean identities, sine squared is gonna be one minus cosine squared. So I'm gonna change the rest of these, right? I'm pulling one aside, and then I'm gonna change the rest of these into, you know, versions of cosine, one minus cosine squared, right? One minus cosine squared times sine x. So then what we've got, integral, so what did I just do? So this sine to the five becomes this, one minus cosine squared, one minus cosine squared, um, times sine x, right? Times the cosine squared that was already there with respect to x. Try to get these separated just a little bit. Um, and so the move is gonna be, right, whatever we, whatever one had the odd power, we're gonna take the other and use that as our u. So we're gonna let u equal, in this case, cosine of x. Right, so the sine x is our kind of one leftover. We want to use the other as our cosine. Everything here is going to be in terms of cosine. You could kind of remultiply here and expand it and do everything. I think it might be easier if we do that once we've done the u substitution and we just work with u's instead of having to write, you know, cosine to the six and cosine to the four and, and everything. Um, so our derivative, right, du dx for cosine is negative sine x. So we'll have to carry that negative through. Not a big deal, right? We just need to make sure we're doing it du over negative sine x, right? So then this will become, so the integral uh, so what do we have? Cosine x is u, so one minus u squared, right? One minus u squared um, 
sine x. Uh, you know, in theory, if you're trying to write this as clean as possible, maybe you would take sine of x to the very end. I'm not really doing that because it's just about to be canceled anyway, right? du over negative sine x, right? So the whole idea with that one that you sort of pulled out, which is why we need it to be odd, right? You need it to be odd so you can have one left over and then the rest will be versions of, of a square. Sine cancel sine. The negative is, is along for the right here, right? So then this is negative. So this would be kind of one minus u squared, one minus u squared times u squared du. We'll have to foil this and expand it out and, and sort of multiply. So let's expand. I'll just keep that negative in front. What would this be? This would be kind of, right, one times one is one. We'd get like a minus two u squared, right? Because minus u squared and minus u squared and then minus times minus is plus u to the four. That whole thing is times the u squared out here. You can kind of see what I mean where it's maybe easier to do this with everything in terms of u rather than uh, trying to write and do all this sort of algebra steps where it still looks like a cosine. It's obviously possible to do that. It's just maybe a little cumbersome. So negative. So what's this going to be if I distribute that? So that'd be u to the two minus two times u to the four plus u to the six du. So there we go. It takes a second, uh, obviously, to kind of get everything laid out and, and kind of cleaned up. I guess that's to be expected, right? You know, probably the, the easier two-step kind of integrals, we've essentially done them all already. So, so as we get into these longer processes, part of it, again, is about sort of being clever and sort of learning these setups. And, and so sometimes they expand out a bit. Part of it also, too, is, is being comfortable knowing that doing these algebra steps is all okay. You know, we're kind of just doing this algebra work, knowing that we're gonna to get to something in the end that's still totally fine. Um, so you need to just sort of sit and like do these algebra steps and, and kind of know you're gonna to get to something that's semi-decent. Uh, the antiderivative here, so negative, so this would be like negative what? One third u cubed minus minus, right? So that'd be plus. 2 over 5, u to the 5, right? Power goes up by 1, we'll divide by the new one. Minus comes through, so minus 1 over 7, u to the 7, plus big C. And then all that's left over is to sub back in the original u, which in this case is cosine, right? So minus 1 third, right? Cosine cubed of x plus 2 fifths cosine to the 5 of x minus 1 7 cosine to the 7 of x plus big C. So that process will work provided one of the powers is odd, right? If you have an odd power and you can sort of pull, right, an extra cosine or a sine out to the end and then just convert the rest of them using that Pythagorean identity from either a sine squared or a cosine squared, right, into a one minus the other squared, um, everything gets transformed and then you're good to go. You'll get integrals that look kind of like this. You'll get sort of ex expanded power rule type things once you do the u sub. But in general, that's that's what's gonna happen. Uh, obviously you can sort of, you know, you can do this for, for powers as high as you want to. The higher the power, the like more expansion there is, the more just like foiling and multiplying, and obviously the higher the powers you're gonna get here. That aspect of it would be annoying, right? If you had to do like a sine to the 11 times a cosine to the 13 or something, that would just take a really long time. Um, but in theory, this same kind of strategy would work. Um, it would also work even if the powers were off. There's one in the book, I think, where there's like, you know, a sine to the negative two times a cosine cubed. So the idea there, as long as you have the odd power, you can pull one of them out. And then even if the other right value sine to the negative two or you know root of sine or something, uh, you know, even if you have a weird power on the other one, as long as one of them is odd, you're totally good to go. So that's what to watch for. Um, next video, of course, will be what if they're both even and there's no odd powers.